This is Value Investing. I'm your host, Jun Kim. In this podcast, you'll learn everything related to value investing. Bull markets are born on pessimism, grown on skepticism, mature on optimism, and die on euphoria. The time of maximum pessimism is the best time to buy, and the time of maximum optimism is the best time to sell, by John Templeton. Hello, fellow investors. Welcome to another episode of the Value Investing Podcast. On today's show, I want to talk about this person, John Templeton, and he was a legendary investor and mutual fund manager who founded the Templeton Growth Fund. And he was an early innovator in global value investing. And his family of funds held over $13 billion in assets when he sold the firm in 1992. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over 16 rules by John Templeton. And I'm going to put the link in the show notes so that you can read by yourself. And this is the document from Franklin Templeton Company. And I think you can learn quite a lot from John Templeton. And I don't know if he's well known these days, but he was superstar back in the days. And he was quite similar to Warren Buffett in many aspects, but he was also different in other areas. So I'm going to point those things out during today's show. So I'm excited to go into the details, but before we do that, as always, I want to give you a quick disclaimer that this podcast is for entertainment purposes only, and it is your responsibility to consult with your investment professional for any investment decisions. So without further ado, why don't we get started? So the first rule is invest for maximum total return. I think this is the area where a lot of people and a lot of investors tend to forget, including me. Because if I just go to my brokerage account, stock brokerage account, if I want to check my stock portfolio value in total, what I do is I just look at the pre-tax number. I don't tend to calculate after-tax number and I don't tend to take into account inflation. But I think they don't matter much uh, in the short term. But if you look at the long term, inflation is definitely coming to play whenever you try to calculate your performance of stock portfolio, for example. And the tax is going to definitely come into play whenever you try to sell your positions, right? So it's important to know what matters at the end of the day. What matters is you have to take into account taxes and you have to take into account inflation. And that's what matters. And that's what John Templeton is saying in this first rule. A lot of people invest in fixed income and bonds because they feel it is safe. But if you look at the long term, think about long term, like 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, right? If you think about long term, then inflation it's going to take away significant portion of your returns, right? So if, let's say, inflation average is 4%, it will reduce the buying power of a $100,000 portfolio to $68,000 in just 10 years. So it actually goes down quite significantly, So in other words, to maintain the same buying power, the portfolio would have to grow to $147,000, which is 47% gain from initial investment portfolio net worth, $100,000. So it's quite significant over a 10-year time period, right? What about 20-year time period, 30-year time period? It's going to be a lot more significant. So You definitely need to take into account inflation and you have to protect yourself from inflation. The best asset class that can allow you to protect from inflation is stocks. And if you have too many fixed securities in your portfolios, you may not be efficient in terms of preventing yourself from getting into the trap of inflation. The second one is a tax, right? So tax is also something that you have to pay whenever you sell your positions. So 
you have to think about the implications of tax effect at the end of the day. And if you invest your money in 401k or Roth, then also you're trying to minimize the impact of tax, right? So that's also important to consider whenever you make your investment decisions. So that was the first rule. And let's move on to the second rule. The second rule is invest, don't trade or speculate. It's quite obvious, right? And John Templin is here is saying that stock market is not a casino. But if you move in and out of markets every time you move a point or two, or if you continually sell short or deal only in options or trade in futures, the market will be your casino. There are a lot of traders and there's nothing wrong about that. And I'm not against like speculation or trading. But if you consider yourself to be a value investor, then you have to stick with your strategy. Your strategy is to find right companies and, you know, stay there in the long term, at least uh, three to five years. And you make money off of business developments uh, and so on, not based on stock price movements every single day. So I think that's quite interesting. And let me give you a quick um, stats that I found online, which is quite fascinating. So these stats actually show what would have happened to your portfolio if you missed best 10 days in the stock market. So if you look at from January 4th, 1999 to December 31, 2018, so it's approximately 20 year time period. And if you look at the portfolio, like if you fully have been fully invested in S&P 500 during during this time period, your dollar value is going to move from, let's say your initial investment was $10,000 and it's going to go up to $29,845. So it's about 5.6% annualized rate of return if you had fully invested your money in the market in S&P 500 index. However, if you missed 10 best days out of 20 year time period, just 10 days, you missed 10 best days, then your portfolio dollar value is going to go from 20, approximately $30,000 to $15,000. Your portfolio value is going to go down by 50% if you miss 10 best days in the stock market. So think about yourself. Can you actually really find out these 10 best days out of 20 years time period? If your answer is no, then don't try to time the market because that's not a good strategy because you never know when these 10 days is going to take place. If you don't know, then just keep your money invested in the stock market. And that's my strategy. And if you try to speculate, then you might miss out on these 10 best days and your portfolio value is going to go down by 50%, 50%, not 10%, 20%, by 50% over 20-year time period. So that's based on historical data. So that's what John Templeton here is trying to say. Don't trade or speculate, uh, just invest. And that's what he's emphasizing here. Let's move on to the next rule. Next rule is remain flexible and open-minded about types of investment. So he's saying that there are times to buy blue chip stocks, cyclical stocks, corporate bonds, U.S. Treasury instruments, and so on. And there are times to sit on cash because sometimes cash enables you to take advantage of investment opportunities. And he's saying that he wants to be open-minded and he recommends other people to be open-minded about different types of investments. Some people might just stick with, you know, blue chip stocks. Some people might just stick with their savings account. And some people might not get close to bonds or fixed income securities and so on. But if you leave out one of these asset classes, then you are not being open-minded. That's, I think, what John Templeton is trying to say here. And if you look at history, there were times when one asset class is better than the other asset class, even within common stock space. In some periods, growth 
stocks actually have performed way better than value stocks. That's what happened over the last 10 years. In other periods, value stocks have performed way better than growth stocks. So if you are open-minded about the trends and all these things, um, maybe you have a better chance to find better value within uh, different areas. And also, John Templeton is known for investing in international markets, not just U.S. markets. And I may talk about that more details later on. But that's the difference between John Templeton and Warren Buffett, because Warren Buffett tends to invest a significant portion of his money in the U.S. market, and that's what he believes in. But John Templeton thinks that there are a lot of opportunities outside of U.S. John Templeton is asking, why would you just restrict yourself to one specific market when you have a lot of opportunities out there? And his logic is that your chance of finding good value investment strategy, value investments, will go up, would probably go up if you actually look at many different areas. So be flexible and open-minded about types of investments and different markets and so on. So let's move on to the next one. So next one is buy low. This is obvious. So people might say, duh. Well, but is it really the case? We want to buy low and sell high. That's the strategy probably a lot of people want to implement. But what happens is whenever there is a pessimistic view in the market, a lot of people get fearful and they actually stay on the sidelines. And that's what happens. And they don't actually buy low because they get fearful and they get emotional and they feel like the stock market is going to crash and so on. And it could crash. And there's no doubt about that. But if you believe that certain individual stocks are selling at very cheap and deep discount, then I think you shouldn't worry about in the short term whether a stock market is going to crash or not. And if you're right, then eventually stock price is going to recover to intrinsic value level and you're going to make money. So if you want to implement this strategy, buy low and think about uh, many different opportunities and try to do your research and find out why the individual stocks are selling at deep discount and you can implement these strategies based on your valuation and even if the stock crashes right after you purchase you shouldn't worry too much about the stock market crashes in the short term because as i mentioned it's going to recover if you are right on the valuation he's saying here in the document this is foolish but it's human nature it is extremely difficult to go against the crowd to buy when everyone else is selling or has sold, to buy when things look darkest, to buy when many experts are telling you that stocks in general and in this particular industry or even in particular company are risky right now. So it is very, very difficult to go against the crowd. You feel like you know, you're not confident that your assessment is right. So you need some courage in order to go against the crowd. And that's what John Templeton is saying here. And it's aligned with what Warren Buffett has saying in the past. So I, I feel like there's a lot of overlap between John Templeton and Warren Buffett in these aspects. Okay, so let's move on to number five. Number five is... When buying stocks, search for bargains among quality stocks. So you can find a lot of value stocks that do not have quality. And you can find a lot of overvalue stocks that have quality. So it's not easy to find bargains among quality stocks. Especially, I think that's ha what's happening in the U.S. If you look at but international markets, I think you can find some bargains among quality stocks. That's just my view as of right now. Quality is a company strongly entrenched as the sales leader in a growing market. And quality is a company that's the technological leader in a field that depends on technical innovation. Quality is a strong management team with a proven track record. Quality is a well-capitalized company that is among the first into a new market. Quality 
is a well-known trusted brand for a high profit margin consumer product. That's what John Templeton said. So when it comes to quality, people basically know what um, you know what these companies are, right? If you look around, there are a lot of good companies in the U.S. market and so on. But as I mentioned, it's not easy to find good quality companies that are selling at deep discount, and that's just the current situation. But what John Templeton is saying here is search for bargains among quality stocks. Let's move on to the next one. Buy value, not market trends or the economic outlook. He said, a wise investor knows that the stock market is really a market of stocks. While individual stocks may be pulled among momentarily by a strong bull market, ultimately it is the individual stocks that determine the market, not vice versa. All too many investors focus on the market, trend, economic outlook, but individual stocks can rise in a bear market and fall in a bull market. So I think this is an important point, and I think this is also a little bit obvious, because if you look at the bull market or bear market, individual stocks tend to move together with the market to a certain extent, but not necessarily so in the same direction. In some cases, if you pick the right winners, then individual stocks could actually rise during bear market and vice versa. Okay, so I think that's enough about rule number six. So let's move on to rule number seven. Diversify in stocks and bonds as in much else. There's safety in numbers. So th- I think this is where John Templeton is different from Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. Because Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, they think that diversification may not be necessary if you know a lot about the company. And if you are staying within your circle of confidence, if the odds are stacked in favor of you, then you definitely need to concentrate your portfolio. I think that's the investment strategies that at least Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett are implementing. But here, John Templeton said, diversify. He said, no matter how careful you are, you can neither predict nor control the future. A hurricane, earthquake, a strike at a supplier, an unexpected technology advance by a competitor, government order product recall. Any one of these can cost a company millions of dollars. Then two... What looked like such a well-managed company may turn out to have serious internal problems that weren't apparent when you bought the stock. So you diversify by industry, by risk, and by country. For example, if you search worldwide, you'll find more bargains and possibly better bargains than in any single nation. I just read what John Templeton said. I think that this is good advice. And there's always like, you know, fine balance between how much application you need versus concentration you need. Because if you diversify too much, then you basically become the market. And if you concentrate too much, then your idiosyncratic risk is going to go up within your portfolio. So there is always a fine balance between diversification and concentration. And there's a lot of discussions on this point. I personally think that um, if I have more than seven individual stocks across different industries and across you know different countries then i think that's probably good enough for diversification and if it's more than 15 stocks then you cannot really understand all the things with respect to those 15 companies so i would say that from seven stocks to 15 stocks that's about uh, the range uh, that I would recommend. Um, at least that's what I do for my own portfolio. Okay, so we talked about seven rules today by John Templeton. So let me just quickly go over them. The number one, invest for maximum total real return. Number two, invest, don't trade or speculate. Number three, remain flexible and open-minded about types of investment. Number four, Buy low. Number five, when buying stocks, search for bargains among quality stocks. Number six, buy value, not market trends or the economic outlook. 
Lastly, diversify. In stocks and bonds, as in much else, there is safety in numbers. So those are the seven rules that we talked about by John Templeton. And as you can see, there's a lot of similarities between John Templeton and other value investors like Peter Lynch, Warren Buffett. And also, as I pointed out, there are some differences. And I think it's up to you to decide which legendary value investors make more sense in your specific case. In my case, I adapt some you know, aspects from one value investors and I adapt other aspects from other value investors and try to make it my own. Right. So because everyone has different situations and everyone has different needs and different temperament. So I think it's important for you to understand yourself and your personality, emotions and all these things and try to adapt the right approach from different value investors. In many cases, you can actually become successful, not just with one strategy, but you know, with different strategies, people make different different types of decisions and they can actually make money in the stock market by different strategies. So as long as you stick with that strategy, as long as you know exactly how you're going to behave during bear market and bull market and what's the right strategy, what's the right diversification and so on, you should be able to come out successfully from investment field. And that's what's important. There's no one size fit all strategies and that's what I wanted to tell on today's show. Anyway, it was really great discussion, I think. Uh, and before I end, I just want to remind you that it's going to be nice if you can leave a review or rating on whatever platform you listen to this podcast. If it's iTunes, then you can go there and uh, leave a rating and review. I actually read every single review on different platforms. So it's going to be very nice for other listeners to find this podcast through that, you know, recommendation system. Anyway, thanks a lot for tuning in and see you next time.